we have the patch notes here today and there's some balance patch some balance patch happened and i just want to go over this let's see what their comments are right there are many changes to class balance in season three update various variables such as tier four growth levels arc passives hyper awakening and hyper awakening seals have come into play resulting in large and small changes for each class and some of these changes have shown some of these have shown new changes over time class balance is constantly changing but since the fluctuation has started to decrease slightly after act one update of casual's raid we've made numerical changes uh numerical adjustments to alleviate the performance gap between classes as a priority since this balance patch is being carried out along with new raid content we will closely monitor the balance changes between classes and continue to do our best to create a better battle environment I mean, I think overall it does make sense to like make numbers adjustments as opposed to big sweeping changes, especially when a new raid is coming out because it would suck to have to like learn your class on top of learning a raid. So I get that, and I will like I'm ex fully expecting more changes to come soon, and like maybe some big like big changes, like for example maybe like a rework of Solfus or something like that. Destroyer. PVE damage of Liberation skills increased by 1.1. Okay, overall Destroyer buff. That's crazy. They didn't nerf GT. I feel like they just nerfed GT every single patch, right? <laughs> Sharp Hammer critical rate increases by X% percent per core consumed. Um, okay, so that was buffed 1% across the board. When using Liberation skill, um, critical damage increases by 6 12, 18, and this is again buffed by 1% here, 2% here, and 3% here, which is pretty good. So it looks like Sharp Hammer and Hammer of Wrath are core gravity uh, or rage hammer ones. So gravity training basically didn't get touched. Other than this, right, they got a 1.1% buff, but overall, um, this is just rage hammer stuff. Okay, arc passive, low knight. Uh, up by 1%, 2%, 3% again. Um, I'm not sure if this makes them more attractive to play. I did see like people were like, you know, what was it? A King DDD guy was playing red for his prog, but I don't know if it's just because like he's more comfortable with red. I don't know if this is like enough to make like red more powerful. We'll have to see. And then we had Paladin, which this is not really a buff or a nerf per se this is just basically getting rid of something that is like legacy you guys you get less meter jam but you don't need meter for dps pallet you ought you have you have your meter at 100 24 7 so this is not a nerf it's just this is a legacy kind of thing that did nothing basically so that's why they got rid of it because it did nothing uh so dps down how did it get touched uh, let's see, Mount Faith Gate required from Punishment skill increased by 100%. So basically what they did was they moved this to this. So just overall, all blue skills increase meter gain by 100%, which is kind of busted. I mean, it's not busted per se, but you know how in the past people used to run like plus one punishment for like extra meter gain? Now you get that baked in. So now you get that baked in. Which is kind of cool. Support Paladin got this. Uh, Divine Explosion, cooldown reduced. Light Tripod to Sturdy Tripod. Oh, is this current? Increase attack speed to yourself and allied party members of 24 meter radius. Ch increases duration of damage reduction for your um, self and party members. Did you even, did Pallies even run this tripod? They run the next one? Oh, okay. Perfect Blessing Tripod uh, as follows. Increases mana recovery. Oh, okay, okay. So basically, they're never running this. Okay, so yeah, this is a buff. Okay, so now they give attack speed. So if this is the tripod that you run, right? Basically, they took this tripod and moved it down here. It's not as strong. Like, it's not like 20%, right? But it's still an overall attack speed buff, which you weren't getting before, which is pretty nice. Okay, so Pally are eating good, right? They get more mage ga uh, meter gain, and then they also get um, attack speed buff for the party. That's nice. Okay, Slayer. So 1%, 2%, 3% again on Executioner passive for Slayer. 
So this is for Punisher Slayer. So more damage. And then this is also Punisher Slayer. So Punisher Slayer got a buff. He got 3%, 6%, 8%. That's pretty good. Oh wait, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah, this is this is this is separate. You're right. This is this is this is uh Predator. You're right, you're right. For some reason, because oh my god. The, the reason why I was I misread it is look at this. There's literally Fury Fury. Yeah, this is Punisher and this is Predator. So Punisher didn't get that big of a buff, actually. Punisher actually did get that big of a buff. It was only 3% here, and then Predator got an 8%. So Predator got a bigger buff, but Predator was also worse than Punisher. Okay, and then we got a nerf to Esso Ward Answer by 3%. I mean, is it that bad? I don't think so. Like, honestly, you probably will barely notice it. Um, okay, so for Soul Fist... He got a 3% buff here, 2%, 1%, okay. And then this is... So they got a slight, not buff, but rework or reorganization here for Soul Fist. So this one right here, Limit Break. Pretty sure this is a robust Soul Fist. Yep, this is a robust. So they buffed Robust by 1%, 2%, 3%, which I don't think is enough to make it strong. And I definitely, I still don't think it's enough for people to not play um, EO. Well, now this one. I don't know what the meta Sophist build was, but I guess judging by what, what they did with this, maybe people were running, running like one point in this, right? And then just taking the 50%. 50% cooldown reduction on the, uh, what is it? The meter when pressing X key, right? But now you're forced to take all the points on this. So you're not able to invest it in other things. The OP spec build isn't as good now until we get more points. Yeah. I'm thinking that this is because they changed this. We don't have enough points at the moment to get 50% reduction. Eventually we will, but not at the moment. You're probably like stuck at like 40 or 30% now, which is, you know, not as good. I think maybe with this, people might go back to the Swift build. I don't know. We'll see, right? We'll see. So this is Glavier and all they got for, well, they got this, right? The skills for their um, stagger and stuff changed. So how much stagger their skills gave changed. And then for identity, they have it so that you get an extra 10% crit damage when you swap to red, I think. And then you get an extra 5% damage to enemies when you swap to blue. And you get both, you know, you get both buffs, right? Basically, a across the board, a 10% damage buff. Um, or 10% crit damage and a 5% damage buff across the board. 10% damage, like if it was 10% damage and 5% damage, a total of 15% damage across the board. I think that's crazy. But this is 10% crit damage and then 5% damage across the board. So I guess now that I'm reading this, right? As, uh, but if we go down here, it looks like they have an additional thing that gives another 10%. Wait, hey, what? So are those separate things? Oh yeah, they are separate. I think this is the base of Glaver, because the effect of Rampage stance has been followed, right? This is not an engraving. This is just the base of the thing. And then when you take the um arc like the actual class engraving, the arc passive, it gives you an additional on top of that. Glaives are probably still not great. You get an additional 10, 20% crit damage and a 5, 10% damage across the board. I mean, that's a decent amount of damage, right? 10% damage across the board and 20% crit damage? That sounds pretty significant. We'll have to see. I mean, I don't think it's going to shoot it to the moon, right? But it might take it out of like the garbage tier territory to maybe like average or like slightly below average. Um, okay. Striker. So we got basically 
a 7.5% damage buff. This is, I mean, let's just look at the last one, right? This is 8%, 8% damage buff across the board. It's not that much, but it's something, right? I think that maybe this pushes us a little bit up, maybe mid to above mid, but I don't think we're going to be competing for the top dogs. So Deathblow got a slight buff, which I appreciate. And I think SO is in an okay place. Now, Breaker. This one. Ooh. Ooh. PV damage of Fallen Flower. Their Z skills were reduced by 12%. The damage of PVE skills overall has been reduced by 12%. Ooh. That absolutely hurts. So Sura got a slight buff. And then a 1% nerf for this, for King's Fist. So Sura got a slight buff. King's Fist got absolutely destroyed. I mean, again, I just don't think it's going to be like terrible. It's still going to be very, very strong, but it's definitely not going to be like OP, like ridiculously OP anymore. And then for Devil Hunter, so this is EW. That is a 6% buff um, for crit damage, 6% crit damage. And then Strategic Equipment. That is a 3% damage. Um, I mean, I don't know how strong Deadeye is enhanced weapon. People always say they're bad, but I've always like seen really good numbers from them. And even in our version, if you're really if you're good at the class, so it's you know, it's a nice buff. And then artillerist. Ooh. 8% nerf. 8% nerf. Let's see. Firepower buff. And then 2% on chair form. I don't know where they are in the tier list right now, but I would assume that they'd go probably down a tier with this change. Rest and pepperonis. 07. Okay. Hawkeye, so this is a uh, sharpshooter. Um, hawk support, while summoning Silver Hawk, attack power increased by 5%. Okay. Hawk support, so that's on the loyal companion side of things. Okay. Loyal companion, 5% attack power. Okay. Final target, um, that is Death Strike. Increases damage taken from. from Ooh, Death Strike 3% nerf? And then Target of the Storm is Loyal Companion. So Loyal Companion got a slight buff. 3% here, 5% here, right? And then... So that's about 8%. And then... Death Strike got a 3% nerf. I mean, they've been basically buffing Loyal Companion like over and over again for a while. So, you know... John Pal has been eating good for a while, even though Death Strike did get like a crazy buff during uh, T4, like right when they got the arc passive. But I mean, I don't think this is like a crazy nerf, right? It's like 3% damage. It's barely anything. Death Strike's still better. Yeah, 100%. Death Strike is still, still, uh, is still better. But they got slightly like, you know, the, the difference got truncated a little bit. Okay, Gunslinger. Um, critical hit damage. 27%, uh, 7%, so that's a 12% crit damage buff. And then damage to enemies increase by 12%. Yeah, this is TTH. So TTH got a little bit of buff. I still don't think that's enough to make it good, but all right. So nothing really much for Gunslinger, unfortunately, for them. But I mean, I guess TTH players rejoice, all five of them. All right, so Arcana... Damage for four stacks of ruin by minus five percent. Okay, so five percent nerf for Empress, and then Emperor got a seven percent nerf as well. Ooh, 
Ooh. I mean, it's not crazy. It's not like BK, but it still kind of sucks. Not gonna lie. Arcana was doing pretty well, though. They were eating well. They were eating good. But this is nothing crazy. CO, 5% damage buff right there on this one. 5% damage buff here as well. Um, 5% damage nerf on Master Summoner. And another 5% nerf here on Master Summoner. Ooh. Mm, I mean, again, I still think Master Summoner, like, and most of the changes here, right? Unless you're like BK, I think, or maybe even like Sork and S Soul, uh, Soul Eater. Like, you're not, it's not like a crazy change. Nothing's any crazy. But it's all like slight little nerfs that kind of add up over time. Sork got a spec coefficient change, which I don't know how big 0.15 is. It seems pretty big, considering the fact that GT has gotten hit with like a 0.1 before, and it seemed like it was a big change. Um, so on top of this 0.15 change, they also got a four, let's see, explosion, 4% damage reduction, scourge, another 4% though, and then doomsday, another 4%. But slight nerfs across the board. 4% nerfs are, uh, on, on their... Oh, three big skills. Okay. So 4% nerf on B3 big skills. And then... Increases damage of these by this. Increases damage. So a 2% nerf there. Igniter Sork got nerfed a good bit. So 07 Sorks. Igniter Sorks. I mean, again, I don't think it's going to be making them like a weak class by any means but they're not gonna be like ridiculous and powerful like they are right now let's see orb control passive blade art state's speed of orb consumption is reduced by 15 percent and the damage given in blade art state increases by this amount okay so that's a buff one percent buff there when using blade burst attack power increases by 10 20 it's all the way up to 48% up to 45. So it's like 3%. So another buff there. And then this one is another buff. 3% buff. Okay, so Ari got a slight buff and a Surge got buffs on two of their art passives. And then Demonic. I don't know why this happened. But from what I can tell, PS Shadowhunter got nerfed. I don't think... PS Shadowhunter was even that good compared to Demonic, but somehow they gave a nerf. Like, I don't think anybody was complaining about Perfect Sh Suppression Shadowhunter, but somehow they ate a nerf. <laughs> Internal data. Um, okay, Reaper. Let's see. Shadow Step and cooldown for Shadow Step reset. Mood Sounds effect is. Strengthen the damage of raise skill increased by 157. Okay. 12 12% buff right here for damage of raid skills, which I think are red skills, right? So this is increasing red skills. And then for this, this is also Lunar Reaper. 10% buff there. And then for this is for uh, hunger, 6% uh, attack power, and then this is a, that's just a 10% um, ten percent damage across the board. So, buffs for a Reaper, Lunar's gonna be hitting massive numbers. I mean, the thing is, right, Lunar was never weak. The problem with Lunar is the thing where that makes them keep, like, you have to keep hitting the back with your red skills, the, and that's the issue, because if you miss one of your red skills, that just throws off your rotation like crazy because you want to be able to hit the buff on your rage spear and if you miss a back attack that throws off the cycle completely until you like mess it up again so i think like this doesn't really change too much because lunar was never weak it's just that the class like sucked ass to play Reaper's on an overall buff i'd say that hunger probably benefited more because the class is just like more comfortable to play um, Lunar Reapers didn't get what they wanted. Soul Eater. So, Full Moon 
nerfed by 6% across all skills. And then soul gauge acquisition increased. The salvation and reaper skills increase. Is the, and this is a buff to Knight's Edge, I'm assuming. So Fool Moon got about a 6% nerf. It's probably less than 6%, probably like 5-4% because not like the majority of your damage does come from your Z skill, but you know, it's not all of it, right? So slight, definitely a slight nerf on Full Moon, which honestly with how powerful they were, this nerf I don't think is that much. And then Weatherman, so Aeromancer. Crit damage is increased by 30% of your base attack. Okay, okay. So it's not just a 30% across the board. It's 30% of your base attack speed increase and critical strike chance. Okay. But, I mean, that's still pretty dang good. Yeah, I think Full Moon is probably the strongest class right now. I mean, overall, I think that Full Moon definitely got off real easy. They should have gotten nerfed more. They got off real easy. Uh, Wind Fury Arrow got a huge buff. Let's see here. Of course, this got nerfed crazy. This got decent nerf as well for uh, Master Summoner. I think the biggest winner, definitely Paladin, very big winner. And I think Aeromancer, very big winner. Wind Fury Aeromancer. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm going to even say it. I think that another big winner, even though they got nerfed, is Full Moon Soul Eater. Because they should have gotten gutted. But they didn't get gutted. So that's a win for them. And then uh, biggest loser, probably BK. And probably Sork. Solf is big winner. Um, Solf is also a winner. Uh, ish. It depends on how big this change is. If this change is not significant, then they're a winner. But... From what I can tell, this is a relatively big change. Because they're not able to get the full 50% uh, cooldown reduction anymore. So, if that makes it so that the spec variant of the build is not viable, that is a pretty dang big change for them. But we'll have to see. I haven't taken a look at it yet. But it kind of depends though, because I don't know what the Solfus build was, right? Because, like, maybe what the EO Solfus was doing is they were taking one point in this to get the 50%. And now they have to invest four points in it. If you look at Solfus and their tree, this is not a main skill. They're not trying to get this, like, maxed out. Like, they probably, they're going to invest everything into here, right? Uh, one, two, three. And then on this one... It means that if they want the full 40% or whatever, right? They're probably losing about 25 plus percent crit damage. Which does seem significant to me. Because you have to remember, we're like right now, our passive people are starved for points. But like you can't even max out with this skill if you just keep going down this way, right? I think you can only get this up to two right now. So them not being able to just put one like, you know, big like what is it called? Them not being able to just put like one point into this and get the 50% reduction is actually kind of big. I do think that it might be more significant than we think for EO.